Stirling engines have always been one of my favorite gadgets. This is a nice little model made by Scientific Models in Boulder, Colorado. And um, it actually will run off the warmth of a human hand. Of course, if you've got cold hands, you've got a problem. But uh, it, it's it's a really a nice little machine. You have to give a little bit of momentum to get it going. But I just want to show you a couple of interesting things about these. Uh, at first, to me, the way Sterling engines work wasn't intuitively obvious. But... Um, the original or the Sterling engine name got its name from a Scottish minister named Robert Sterling. I believe back in the early 1800s, he invented uh, a heat engine. And there's three distinct types that uh, people talk about the alpha, beta, and gamma. I believe this is the gamma type, if I'm not mistaken, because it got a separate power piston from this so called displacer piston in there. Now the displacer piston, if you were to able to look inside this, is um, actually got a got porous openings in it, and it creates what they call a a uh, regenerator or heat economizer, depending on on uh, what you're reading. But uh, in any event, very nice little machine. Basically, what you've got to have is heat on one side, heating up air, making it expand cool side on the other side allowing the air to uh to uh, collapse or shrink in volume and uh, but i'm going to show a couple other little experiments with these things i think are very interesting something else i'd like to demonstrate is we talked about how the delta t or the difference in temperature between the bottom and the top of this is what gives it the uh energy to drive the uh, drive piston causes the expansion and contraction of the air inside there so as you know as you can see it's running off my hand because my hand is warmer than the air temperature here inside this room but if I get rid of that delta T by placing my other hand on the top plate It'll probably slow down and stop. Let's see. A little hard to do this without just jamming it. As the top plate warms up closer to my hand temperature, the delta T will go away and it should slow down and stop. slowing down so it doesn't take much of a delta T to make this turn that's why we can run it off our hand you know in a room that's obviously cooler than body temperature it also doesn't take much to do away with that delta T to cause it to stop. I just thought that was very interesting. This mug is filled with hot water. As you can see, the Stirling engine is turning and this looking at it in this direction in a clockwise direction. If you stop this and try to turn it the other way, it won't go. See, goes back and want to go in the clockwise direction. Doesn't want to run the opposite direction. However, if you now take that same engine and put it on something cold like this cup of ice water, it'll take a minute for it to cool down. Um, you'll find that it it will run now in the opposite direction. But of course the uh, heat transfer surface on the bottom has to give up that heat and become cold relative to the top. And uh, we'll take a look at that. So you can see it's slowing down and as if it'll go in the opposite direction. I had to give the Stirling engine a little bit of time. 
for the bottom of the heat, you know, this heat transfer surface on the bottom to um, cool off. But as you can see, it's now sitting on the cold water cup. It's turning in the counterclockwise direction before it was turning in the clockwise. It's kind of neat. So that now the surface is warm relative to the bottom, whereas over here, the top was cool relative to the bottom because of the hot water in this cup. I mean, to me, this is just, I just love these things. They're just really, really fascinating. And uh, we'll show you something else in a few minutes. I think the, uh, the best way to probably understand what's going on with this is you need pretty good you know, heat transfer only is only going to occur through the surface so you got a pretty good surface area in there but the air has to get in contact with that surface to be able to either be cooled or heated up and this little displacer in there really is very efficient at making that happen so i'm really impressed with the way these things work Okay, we're back on the um, hot cup. You can see it's rotating in the clockwise direction again. Let's take a look at the temperature on this top surface. Reading 77 degrees, actually 77.4. We'll just take a quick look at the bottom, turn it sideways. You can see your scientific models information, 91.3. So, not a huge temperature difference. It'll, it'll actually spin much less than that, like we showed it spinning on your hand. But it takes very little temperature difference to make these things spin. Again, fascinating little device. There's a number of people that sell them. These guys who uh, built this, the scientific models, did a really nice job on this, I think. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it.